if you saw my earlier video, you know that this is um, not a very poorly made Blue Peter project, but a spectroscope, a spectrometer, I should say. Um, and the reason I built it, this is just really proof of concept, but it worked so well that I've been using it. And one of the reasons I wanted to use it is to um, test the wavelengths of various LEDs. <coughs> and I've had some on order and they've arrived. And so I'm going to use the spectrometer, spectrometer to check the wavelengths against the advertised numbers and see if these, these um, devices really do radiate at the wavelengths um, that they say they do. And as time goes on, I'll also use the spectrometer to make sure or to see if um, the spectra of each of these emitters um, has shifted as it can do if the emitter gets too hot or is poorly made. So let's do that now. So I'll start with uh, this strip of LEDs um, because I know they must be the red ones. Um, I tried uh, this before. I put a clip here and a clip here. And it didn't work because, of course, <laughs> I was shorting out the power supply on the back, so not very clever. So what I'll do is put a piece of um, piece of cardboard behind so that the clips don't touch that, and then just positive to positive, negative to negative. I'm limiting current to 700 milliamps. And I'll start the, um, the voltage swing uh, at about 5 volts. Turn it on. Ooh, crikey. Um, you shouldn't really put 5 volts across um, a diode whose forward voltage is about 1.5, one, 1 and a bit. Um, but it was okay because the power supply was current limiting and I'd set the maximum to 700 milliamps. So it was using um, whatever voltage it needed to drive uh, the correct current. Well, that's working. Oh, that's really bright. So at this point, we'll move over to the spectrometer view so you can see um, what I'm seeing on the screen as I test the various LEDs. Right, this is a blue LED. Uh, it's reading 431, and it's probably um, the royal blue, or the ordinary blue, 440. So it's, uh, it's about 9, 8 to 9 low. This is another LED, 447, so it's a bit bigger than the 440, which is uh, 8 low. I think it's probably, since it's a different blue visually, this is supposed to be the 470, so it's a good way short. Okay, here's a red LED. These should all be 660, and this is 643, 644. Um, the brightness is quite low. I'll turn up. Uh, the current to uh, its recommended maximum, so that's 100, that's at uh, 400, that's at 500, 600, so you can see the width of the uh, the bandwidth of the, the uh, emitter increases, but its central point doesn't change, it, well, it just change a little bit, it's now at 647, so it's gone up from 643, let's see if that's consistent, turn it down, 644, 645, 8. So it's coming up to 650, but it's not 660 as advertised. And that's quite important um, because um, it's not well aligned with the PAR spectrum. This is the spectrum of the so called white LED. Um, so it's a range of frequencies, um, they, they quote a colour temperature. But you can see the peaks in there. Now there is something called Wien's Law or Vine's Law or I don't know how you pronounce his name but it expresses a relationship between the peak wavelength of a spectrum and its colour temperature and the relationship is that the peak wavelength should be at 3 million divided by the colour temperature in Kelvin. So for a 4500 Kelvin colour temperature which this LED has the peak should be at 666 nanometers. As you can see it's nowhere remotely near that. Hmm. This is another red. I just want to see how consistent they are um, because I bought 16 of these. This is they're very consistent and they're very consistently not what I bought. This one is 644. That's running at 210 uh, milliamps. Let's take it up to its uh, rated maximum. 
there's 700, 647 again, so that's a characteristic of them all. As you reach the maximum, e, uh, the wavelength increases, but it's still 13 nanometers short. Well, that's that. Let's recap. Um, I bought two sorts of blue LED, one at 440 and one at 470 nanometers. What I got was uh, blue LEDs at 432 and 447. Neither of them are particularly close to the 470 nanometers, so that's a concern. Um, but the biggest concern is the red LEDs, um, which were all supposed to be 660. I've got 16 of them. And they're all around 647, which is very significantly off. What is that? 13, 13 nanometers off. Um, he sells 640s, um, and I noticed that at the moment he's saying that his 660s are out of stock. So I'm thinking, hmm, did he sell me 640s instead of the 660s I asked for? thinking that I'd never know and of course Joe Blow wouldn't normally know there aren't many spectrometers out there in the in the buying public so I've written to him see what he says one last little wrinkle in this story um, I ran the LEDs um, on the assembled lamp until it got hot it equilibrates when it's just you can hold it but it's hot um, and took the readings again and all of the LEDs got longer in wavelength so 432 went up to 435 which is only 5 off of the target 447 went up to 451 which is uh, 19 off of the target and the 660 sorry the 647 went up to 650 which is 10 off the target so again more information about how these things operate from practical experimentation interesting a final comment on all of this all of these so-called 3 watt LEDs were actually around half that advertised power I spoke to the seller and apparently this is industry standard yay anyway I hope you enjoyed that subscribe if you want more like it if you liked it and um, the next video I make in this series will show you the light that I actually built with these LEDs